Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God desires to fill us with his spirit. First and foremost, to fill us with his spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Are we happy to be here this morning? I thank God for the direction of his spirit in our lives. I thank God for the inspiration that he has continued to share with us. Amen. And my prayer is this morning will not be any different. Hallelujah. On Thursday, we try to understand a little bit more about the spirit of God that has been given to us. Amen. One thing is certain from the scriptures. We know that God from time to time fills us with his spirit. Amen. And so first and foremost, I believe will be that feeling. Why do I say that? Jesus said to the disciples, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until his spirit from on high shall do what? Shall come upon you. Praise the Lord. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until his spirit from on high shall come upon you. Jesus said, I go to the Father. If I do not go, the comforter will not do what? Will not come. Jesus said, it is advantageous to you that I go to the Father. Now, if you understand what Jesus is trying to say, I mean, in our own mind and in our own understanding, we will feel that having Jesus physically present would be, will be the the best thing that could ha ever happen to us. Is it not true? Amen. But even Jesus himself knew that that was not the best for you and I. Hallelujah. I, I don't know whether you're following what I'm saying. Even Jesus himself knew that that was not the best for you. But, I mean, if we are to say, we will say that is the best uh, situation. Amen. <laughs> but even Jesus himself knew that that was not the best. And then he began to tell them about the coming of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which will be more advantageous to them. Are you getting what I'm saying? In other words, if Jesus were to remain with them, they would never realize their purpose here on earth. Does it sound strange? Amen. Amen. For the religious people, it will sound strange. Because, I mean, if Jesus was there, I mean, what, what else are you talking about? That's the end of the matter. Amen. Hallelujah. But that was not going to be the end of the matter. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Henceforth, know him no more after the what? Flesh. Because Jesus after the flesh, can it talk about signs and wonders huh? that you saw in the book? <laughs> Amen. That's all he would have achieved for you. Are you following what I'm saying? But it was important that Jesus would go back to the Father in order to allow the Holy Ghost to come. And not just that he had to go to the Father because, you know, we now know the process by which he eventually went to be with the Father. Amen? That process by which he now went to be with the Father through the shedding of his blood, through dying on the cross, was the process that enable the Holy Ghost for whosoever that will believe to come and have his dwelling in man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That was what paved the way. Without that sacrifice, without what Jesus did, it would never have been possible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, what I'm saying this is if Jesus went through all this process in order for you and I to take advantage of the Holy Ghost, we will be doing ourselves a lot of injustice by not giving heed to these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, 
I would always put down my frustration. It will never be God that it's it's never it will never be God who would be the problem. Amen. Hallelujah. God is never the architect of my frustration. His word still remains true. I know the thoughts that I have towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God would never be the architect of my frustration. He said, they who observe lying vanities have forsaken their sure messes. Now, if that is the case, then it means that I am the architect of my frustration. Hallelujah. I am the architect of my frustration. That's why he said, the same one that descended was the same one that ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. Some he gave apostles, some he gave prophets, some he gave pastors, teachers, evangelists. For the perfecting of the saints towards the work of ministry. For the edification of the church. Amen. So, you will see that God has taken a lot of steps in order to put things in order. Amen. Amen. When the disciples, when he, you know, he came and um, assembled, you know, 12 disciples and afterwards, by the time he went to heaven, it dawned on him that the, the, the disciples, he left on ground either for one reason or the other did not fully understand his uh, mission and his agenda and he had to break protocol to come looking for one named apostle paul amen <laughs> hallelujah and we can all see that breaking of that protocol was very very necessary because apostle paul single-handedly wrote three quarters of the new testament so God was right in breaking the protocol. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Glory be. Now, why I'm saying this is for you to know that it will never fall at the doorstep of God. Bible said, there was a man, a devout man in the land of Joppa who feared God and gave arms. God knew that unless this man had the gospel, he will not enter into eternity. And what did God do? He made Peter to begin to, you know, have visions of um, all manner of creatures that are forbidden for the Jews to eat. And in that vision, Peter said, you know, that he couldn't, you know, when he was told to rise, kill, and he said that, well, no, we are, not, we are forbidden to eat this. And the Lord said, what I have cleansed you cannot say it is not cleansed. Amen. Hallelujah. And whilst he was wondering what was happening, behold, some men came from Joppa and were asking of him. Amen. These were Gentiles that the Jews had no business, no kind of relationship whatsoever. So when Peter went there to, you know, according to the vision that he had, he followed them because God had instructed him to go and there and then when he began to speak the word of god the bible said that the holy ghost fell upon them that we are hearing and believing and they began to speak in tongues hallelujah <laughs> glory be to god can you see that god looks out for everyone amen god looks out for everyone and i say it again your frustrations in life is your own making and moreover what may be frustration for you may even be a blessing but because you, you don't know your left from your right you are looking at the things uh, you know you are going through or passing through as frustration which is still your own making <laughs> hallelujah it's your own making. He said, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Ac 
according to his divine power he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness so the question is what is holding you so if he has given you of his spirit and you have failed to take advantage of what he has given what do you want god to do the children of israel were right before the uh, river of jordan and um, the egyptians were right behind them closing in very fast and moses began to cry unto the lord and god said why criest thou unto me what is it in thy hand what is it that you have in thy hand what do you have in, in your hand all you know to do is to cry but what is it that has been given to you he said strike the rod upon the red sea that's what you need to do to strike that rod upon that red sea and the bible said the moment he did that the sea parted into two for the children of Israel to walk past. What is it that is in thy hand? God has given you of his Holy Spirit. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until the power from on high. Even went further to describe it as the power from on high shall come upon you. And when that power comes, you shall become my witnesses from Jerusalem unto the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. The power from on high. So what seems to be the problem? Because it looks to me like God has equipped you all around. Amen. He has equipped you all around. So what seems to be the problem? What seems to be the problem? And that's a question only you can answer. I cannot even, even attempt to answer that question. Only you can answer that question. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can only answer the question in my own life. You, only you can answer your own question. But as usual, God by his spirit will continue to do everything to help each and every one of us and i believe that that help is even the reason why we are sharing what we are sharing this morning amen hallelujah so god is still busy seeking to help each and every one of us amen and so even though the disciples had an assignment given unto them by god jesus said to them go and preach the gospel go and preach the word of god to the ends of the earth go and tell the world about me hallelujah that was the instruction that was the command but the same one that said to them go and preach the gospel was the same one that said to them tarry ye in jerusalem until the power from on high shall come upon you tarry ye in jerusalem until the power from on high shall come upon you now in other words if they had a run a runoff when he now said go into the world and preach the gospel unto the ends of the earth they would have gone off without any power any empowerment any whatever they, they were without to be able to carry out the assignment does it not look like what many of us are passing through many of us have run out of steam <laughs> hallelujah we have run out of steam and we have become domesticated we are now looking for what the unbelievers are looking for seeking for what the unbelievers are seeking for competing with the unbelievers we share the same values with the unbelievers the things they value are the same things that we value and life to us is about those things that the unbelievers value we have become domesticated 
Why? Because he said, tarry in Jerusalem until the power shall come from on high. Until the power from on high shall come upon you. And in Acts chapter 2, we saw that that power on high is in the person of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We saw how that, that power from on high came upon the believers. And it came in the form of the Holy Ghost. And when that power came, we saw the disciples spring into action. And in the same place where their master was caught and killed and crucified was the same place where they went and stood at the gates and were proclaiming the lordship of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The Bible recorded that they even caught them and beat them mercilessly and warned them not to turn up at that gate anymore but what happened by the time they came out the next day the same people they had beaten and warned were at the gate preaching the same gospel hallelujah <laughs> glory be to god the power from on high was in operation are you hearing what i'm saying it was in operation and of course, the, the high priests and the Sadducees and the Pharisees who were not happy with that kind of gospel, seeing what they had done to Jesus and succeeded, felt that they could also do the same to the disciples and gain more popularity. So they picked up uh, Peter. <laughs> Hallelujah. They picked him up also, wanting or desiring also to met out the same fate that Jesus suffered at their hands to Peter. But the Bible recorded how that the angels came and secured the release of Apostle Peter. And seeing what was on hand and the threat and everything that was happening in their lives at that time, they gathered together once again and began to pray. And they prayed and prayed and prayed. And the Bible says they prayed until they were all filled again with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so like I said on, on Thursday, don't allow English language to disturb your understanding of who God is. Amen. I told us that the Holy Spirit has been given to you and I in the form of a container that needs to be constantly filled. Just an understanding. Amen? That needs to be what? Constantly filled. Because what they received on that day in Acts chapter 2 was not a part of the Holy Ghost. Amen? The Bible says that we are filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us that we all as believers have all been sealed with the seal of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So even though we have the seal of the Holy Ghost upon our lives, but if we do not make the effort, and that's where, you know, that's where many of us fail. If we do not make the effort to stay constantly filled with the Holy Ghost, our lives will run like we do not have that seal of the Holy Ghost upon us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your life will run like you do not have that seal, but you have it. But because you are not filled, you run the danger of going through life without being filled with his spirit. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's where you need to draw the line. What you want, is it to go about bragging about the seal or to go about being filled with the Holy Ghost? Hmm? And for everybody that cares to listen, you, you tell them, I have the seal of the Holy Ghost. Amen? No. 
you move beyond the seal to be what? Feared. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because that's at the point the difference is made. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, if it was not necessary for the apostles, you know, they were already threatened in Acts chapter 4. And they were going through all manner of emotions at that particular time. Coupled with the fear and everything that, you know, the, 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 the high priest and the, you know, people are, got, are in the government at that time wanted to put in them. And they began to pray. They opened their mouths wide and began to pray. The Bible says, once they prayed, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. As much as it is important for you to have the seal, it is also much more important for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. The Bible says, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good. Who went about doing good. The Bible says he had the spirit without measure. And so if your life would make any difference here on earth, then you have to start moving towards being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, do not be drunk with wine wearing in essence, but be thou filled with the Holy Ghost. Be thou filled with the Holy Ghost. And so you can see clearly, even Jesus acknowledged it, that you can do little or nothing without the Holy Ghost. So why are you looking for wood to blame? Why are you looking for wood to, to pile the, the blame on and say that he is the the cause of your problems and your woes. Amen? Praise the Lord. I've shared with you many times, whilst I was working at Torian Bank in those days, they say, ah, you have to be afraid of your managers. You have to be afraid of... <laughs> I have only one person that I fear, and that's God. I don't fear any human being. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. And I've seen, I've seen that fact all through my life. I'm the most dangerous person to want to handle my case i'm telling you the truth that's if, if my case is that if you know what is good for you just leave that matter leave it alone don't just leave this <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> praise the lord just leave this matter it's not your business it got to a point in my life when people start looking for my trouble i turn my back and start running away <laughs> because i know the next thing that will happen. I've seen it countless times. So what I do is, when I see a situation, I turn the next, I turn the other way. I, I move away from that scene immediately because I know what's going to happen to that individual. And that's the truth. Praise the Lord. And many times you hear, yeah, 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 uh, this is my, my boss in the office is oppressing me. <laughs> who, born, who born that boss? Hallelujah. A simple reason why he's oppressing you is simply because you don't know you don't know your left from your right. You don't know your left from your right. It's also like you know um, our young girls who uh, in in school, in university they say lecturer is disturbing me. Lecturer is disturbing you for what? Who born that lecturer? You you know that the thing is my boss in is you know let me tell you, he saw me playing game on on a Saturday. I was we were in the office playing game with the computer so you know clearly that i should not be playing game in the office and then he, he came in he well, didn't have any business coming to the office that day he came that day and then saw me playing game and then he said mr Mohike, i'm going to deal with you i said sir you cannot deal with me he said eh i said yes <laughs> he said okay we'll see I said, no problem. That we will see, oh, we enter that we will see. And he began, he began to do everything to deal with me. And in the process, it didn't even last. In the process of that he made that statement that he was going to, it didn't even take time. They moved him from that department and moved him into admin department. A somebody who was employed as a computer, everything, qualification. 
it was there was a, another department team they moved into and whilst he was targeting me I, I don't know what happened that period you know i think some people uh, a branch called and said they were you know they, they were having problems and i was supposed to come there and they didn't see me you know that i know and I, I was meant to have gone and they called him supposedly as you know the person who they thought was still the computer manager and then he started to act and wrote what we call an intercontinental ballistic missile from his other department he now wrote a ballistic mi missile to query me in computer department <laughs> i thought the query put it inside the trash how can you query me from an you write from like me query from another department to query are you still the computer manager <laughs> he got mad uh, they changed the md put one that he was very friendly with he was working the admin but he made so much money in that admin department that time he was making so much money that he didn't have any need to come back to the computer department but because he wanted to deal with me he has already said it that he would deal with me he told the md he was very good friends with the man he said anything you will do for me bring me back to computer department and the man brought him back to computer department and i went and told one of his friends i said listen go and tell that your friend though <laughs> that he came that he left and went to wherever he went to has got him more dangerous now than that time <laughs> he didn't heed the warning and then one of his faithful days he came back and he didn't see me and of course what he began to do was to write query you know he wrote it halfway and then went home i came the next day somehow i looked on his table and i saw ah, to mr he came with him. within 24 hours would you tell us the reason why you went before time you know I was still addressing, you know, uh, it was a draft, he was still writing it, and I laughed. And that morning, I didn't even know. I didn't even, I woke up the spirit, the, the scripture that came to my heart that morning was, why does the hidden rage and the people imagine eventing against the Lord and his anointed? And that was the scripture that was, you know, going through my heart. And I was wondering, why was this scripture flying in my heart, flying in my heart? And when I came to the office, I saw it, I laughed. And then he came, he walked in, you know, candidate the query. He walked in, ah, and then sat down on his chair. When he sat down on his chair, he said, did, he did like this, vroom, vroom. He heard the table. I was sitting like, right? he heard the table like this. So I, don't know what to, I don't know what is wrong with me. <laughs> I don't know what is wrong with me. He, he managed to pick the phone and call the... One of his very good friends, who was also a manager, he said, come, 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 come fast. He came. Something is happening to me. So the guy, they rushed, came to the office. I was sitting beside him. He couldn't even get up. They started praying for him. The spirit said, don't even join that prayer. Don't join their prayer. I've warned this man, leave you, that he should leave you alone. He refused. After they finished the prayer, <laughs> they, they, they lifted him gently. You know, the MD even directed his uh, uh, that driver. They came, everybody, Mago. You know, they, they carried him. They wanted to take him to the hospital. He went on the... When he got to the door, he said, leave me. Wait a minute. Wait. Everybody was waiting. He, I'm telling you, this is life I'm direct. I'm not telling you a story. He turned back, came to his table, picked up the query, tore it into pieces, and put it into the trash. And then he followed them. And they took him to the hospital. The spirit said to me, if he didn't hear that query, he would have gone from that hospital. He knew that that was the problem he was having. That's why he came and told that query. Yes. He told that query and then followed them. They did all manner of investigation. They didn't find anything. They eventually, they labeled it executive stress. When he came back to that department, he never spoke to me again until they sacked him from that place. He, he, he doesn't answer my good morning. He doesn't answer my good afternoon. I, will, I became the manager. I go and come back as I like. <laughs> no, no need for uh, excuse me, sir. I want to know. I go, go, come back. And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost shall come upon you from on high. These things are not Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are real life situations, real life stories.
I could go on and on and on here to tell you things. But most importantly, and what I want you to understand is that when Jesus said it is advantageous for you that the Holy Ghost will come. That's the master himself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He knows what he's talking. And the only thing that is required of you is to, you know, create that enabling environment whereby you stay filled with the Holy Ghost. You stay filled with the Holy Ghost. It makes a whole lot of difference. Amen? It makes a whole lot of difference. And of what good is it to you to go around without being filled with the Holy Ghost? Of what good is that to you? Absolutely of no good. And that's, you know, that is frustration times frustration times frustration times frustration is to go around without that power of the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Exodus, Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. We'll read from verse 8 and 9. He said, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I shew thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. That's when God instructed um, Moses concerning the building of the sanctuary. And then in verse 21 of that same 25, he said, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the, tes the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above. The mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony. And of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to show us the, the significance of what you know, the sanctuary that God had instructed Moses at that time to build and the implication of that um, sanctuary why it was necessary for them to duplicate the things that were up above here on earth amen exodus 29 from verse 42 it said this shall be a continual bond offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the lord where I will meet you to speak there unto thee, and there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of, of Israel, and will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. Amen? Praise the Lord. And we see the same thing he said to us in the book of Hebrews, where he said, I will make a new covenant with the children of Israel. Where he said, I was going to write my laws upon their heart. So that nobody will need his neighbor to teach him about the law. Everyone will be able to know the Lord for himself. Hallelujah. Now, you can see that by the Holy Ghost, God has achieved the same thing he tried to accomplish in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. Are you getting the picture? Amen. Now, by virtue of the Holy Spirit, God has been able to establish communication or communion with his children. Are you following what I'm saying? That, remember, that's the, the reason why he asked 
Moses to build according to the pattern that was shown unto him. Amen? Because he wanted a situation where he would be able to commune with the children of God. And not just commune with them, but to dwell amongst them. And all that has been accomplished by the Holy Ghost. Are you getting it? Praise the Lord. And so, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, then you are guaranteed of that communion with God. And not just that communion with God, but you are guaranteed of God, the presence of God dwelling inside of you. Which makes a whole lot of difference. Which makes a whole lot of difference. Makes. Finally, in Exodus chapter 40, let's see that also. Exodus chapter 40, after they, they had done what God had asked them to do, the Bible says in verse 34, it says, Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken off from the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all their journeys. Hallelujah. He said, Upon the glory there shall be a defense, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Upon the glory there shall be a defense. Hallelujah. So the, the Holy Ghost dwelling in you, being filled with the Holy Ghost is not, um, it's not, it's not a lighting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is all the equipping that you need. All the equipping that you need to be fruitful in the kingdom of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And without that equipping, you are a toothless bulldog. Amen? You know, when a dog makes so much noise, people will, you know, pass us by, we say, oh, don't enter there, there's a dog there. But the moment the people realize that the dog, all the dog does is bark. <laughs> They said, they said, oh, that's a, a, a dog there. I said, oh, I can't do anything. <laughs> I'm not a cookie in Jesus. So don't try me. But that doesn't mean I'll go out of my way looking for trouble. Amen? Uh, but don't look for my trouble. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. But most importantly is for us to realize that these things are not, they are not stories. Amen? They are not, you know, he said, he said, these are not you know, cunningly devised fables with which you lure men to believe in you know, something that is not real. No, it's not, it's not um, cunningly divine fables. These things are real. The problem is that when you want to turn it around into your selfish end or purpose, it becomes frustrating. Amen? Praise the Lord. But when you stay when you stay on the purpose, on the calling, on what the grace has been given, it will be a rewarding experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what it is. And if you realize the importance, that's, you know, like what happens to us most times, we don't realize these things. And what, uh, you know, the Bible says the same, you know, um, one that descended was the same one that ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. Praise the Lord. He gave gifts. And so he has given. Amen. He said, faithful is he that called him also will do what? Will do it. So you know exactly where the problem centers. Amen. This is where the problem centers. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is not a, a religious thing. It's not something that formula accomplishes. Amen? There's no formula to it. But you gotta put your heart. Amen? 
See, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. You have to hunger and thirst for it. That's the singular distinguishing factor between you and others. You have to be hungry for it. Why would God fill you with his spirit when you are not hungry? No, it doesn't fill people who are not hungry. Amen. So you are waiting for formula, 10 steps to fill being filled with the Holy Ghost. You will not hear it from me. Hallelujah. And there's no formula to it. Huh? No formula. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be what Hunger. Hunger. If you are not hungry for it, no deal. Hallelujah. You got to be hungry for it. Hunger for it. Desire it. Above every other thing, desire it. Be hungry for it. In his presence is fullness of joy and our strength will be restored as we will.